Good morning, everyone, and a very warm welcome to NPARC Spotlight. Thank you all for taking the time to join us on Zoom and YouTube on this National Day weekend. My name is Leslie, and I'm from the National Biodiversity Centre at the National Parks Board. As we salute our flag flying high and marvel at fire, fireworks in the sky, NPARC Spotlight is firmly focused on what's below the rich biodiversity in our greenery and waters as we aspire towards becoming a city in nature. Those who have attended our weekly Saturday talks since June will know that we've covered many species and habitats, nocturnal mammals, birds, spiders, freshwater fish, and rainforests and seas. Today's is the ninth in the series, and being the nation's 55th birthday, we have a treat. My colleague, Dr. Daniel Ng, will talk about something very Singaporean, crabs to call our own. Now, I know many of you might be thinking that this is the crab we call our own. Expensive, but a popular choice for celebrations. But Daniel will be focusing on something else that is even more precious and in fact, priceless. Today, you'll be hearing about some freshwater crab species that are endemic to Singapore, which means they cannot be found anywhere else in the world. True blue Singaporeans indeed. In 1992, our post office issued a set of commemorative stamps and first day covers. Among the species featured, the 75 cents stamp on the lower left featured one that is so rare that it's regarded worldwide as one of the top 100 most threatened species. And its scientific name takes after Singapore. I'll soon hand the time to Daniel, who will present crabs to call our own. For those on Zoom, if you have any questions at any time during the talk, do send them to me as a private message using the Zoom chat and we'll try to get them answered during the Q&A. We are almost ready, but as we have a short interactive portion coming up, I'd like you to take a moment to scan this QR code or type www.menti.com in an internet browser and just keep this handy for later on. I'll give you a few moments to scan the code or type in the link. Okay, we will be moving on with our program. If you haven't gotten the web page open yet, not to worry, we will send the link in the chat again later on. But without further ado, I'd like to welcome Dr. Daniel Ng, Manager of the Terrestrial Branch at the National Biodiversity Centre. Daniel, all yours. Sorry, uh, thank you, Leslie. So a uh, very good morning to everyone. I am Daniel from the National Biodiversity Center. A brief background about myself. I graduated with a degree in life science in 2008 and subsequently graduated with a PhD in 2013. Over the years, I have worked on various fauna groups ranging from amphibians to freshwater crabs. Today, my talk is titled Crabs to Call Our Own. And I will be sharing about the freshwater crabs we have in Singapore and some of the amazing facts about them. As tomorrow is Singapore's National Day, I will also highlight several species that are of very special significance to Singapore. So before we start, I would like to find out more from everyone. What do you associate with the word crab? It can be a single word or even a short phrase. Uh, I will give you some time to join this session and let's key in your answers and we'll see what we get.
Okay, I can see quite a lot of our inputs. So some of the inputs includes uh, chili crab and of course, uh, Singaporeans love our, we love our food and chili crabs or black pepper crabs, they are actually uh, mud crabs or sour crabs that are actually marine species. They are not our freshwater crabs. And we also see various uh, characteristics about crabs, such as having hard carapace or hard shell. They are, have very strong pincers. They also have uh, eight, 10 legs and they also have pincers. So, okay, so I can see that, uh, I can even see uh, they are also regarded as seafood and there are a, a few answers includes like they are cute and and some of the inputs includes uh, they being fierce. So, okay, so I can see that there's quite a lot of inputs. So let's uh, continue on. And okay, so what are crabs? So they belong to the phylum Arthropoda, which includes the insects and the spiders. They are under the class Malastroca. They are under the, the, the order Decapoda. So Decapoda means that they are the 10 legs. So you may wonder why they have 10 legs when I can only see eight walking legs on the crab. And this is because one of this pair of legs actually have been modified to become the enlarged pincers, which is used for feeding. So what are freshwater crabs? They belong to a group of crabs that spends their entire life away from the marine environment. They are different from the marine crabs as they undergo direct development. So the eggs will directly develop into crablets, which are miniature versions of the adult crabs. And this is in contrast to the marine crabs where their life cycles are a lot more complex and they have a lot more stages. When the young crabs hatch from the eggs, for the marine crabs, they do not look like crabs at all. And after a series of transformation, they become more crab-like. And after a few more series of metamorphosis, they eventually transform into very tiny crablets. And compared to the marine crabs, which have very tiny eggs, freshwater crabs tends to have a much larger eggs. And the eggs are about two millimeter in diameter. And they can vary in colors ranging from orange to brown. And as a result of this uh, greater investment of energy per egg, freshwater crabs tend to have a much smaller boot size. So for the smaller species, they can have up to about 50 eggs. And as for the larger species, they can have up to about a few hundred eggs. And as you can see from this photo, this is how the eggs look like. And compared to the marine species, the marine species tend to have a much larger boot size and this can range up to a million eggs. So interestingly, freshwater crabs exhibit maternal care. And when the mother egg, I say mother crab produces her eggs, they'll come out of water and hide inside a burrow. During this stage, the highly protective mother will regularly clean the eggs and guard them against any intruder. After the eggs hatch, the crablets will remain underneath her abdominal flap and will be stay, uh, and will be protected by the mother until they are released to, to begin their independent life. And this whole process can take up to a few months to complete. And during this entire period, the mother's crabs are seldom observed to feed and they have to rely on their own body reserves to survive. And some more about its uh, general biology, freshwater crabs are generally regarded as very poor dispersers as they become very adapted to inland environment, they gradually lose their ability to return back to the sea. In fact, if you place a freshwater crab into salt water, it will die. And over time, due to historical changes in our seawater level, different populations of freshwater crabs become isolated from each other. And this results in the formation of new species. 
And because of this, many species tend to have very small distribution and some species are just restricted to just one hill or even one mountain. And now I would like to pose another uh, question to everyone. So how many freshwater crabs do you think we have in Singapore? It can be, uh, there's four possible answers, three, six, nine, or 12. I review the correct answers later. So currently from the results, it seems that the majority of the people or the audience uh, chose the answer 12. Okay, so now I will review the correct answer. So the correct answer is there are six species of freshwater crabs in Singapore. So Singapore is home to six species of freshwater crabs. The Jurake land crab, the little land crab, the lowland freshwater crabs. These three species are found in Singapore, but it can also be found in our neighboring countries. Uh, as for the last three species, the Johnson's freshwater crab, the swamp forest crab, and the Singapore freshwater crab, these three species are species that are only found in Singapore. They are found nowhere else in the world and they are regarded as endemic to Singapore. So this is relatively uh, interesting as despite our close proximity to Southern Johor, these three species have never been found there or elsewhere, and they are uniquely Singapore. Now I will briefly talk about the six crabs that we have in Singapore. So, okay, so the first species that I'll be talking about is the Baraka land crab. And this species is, uh, although it's locally vulnerable, it can be quite widely uh, found in our nature reserves. And this species, like I mentioned just now, it is, uh, has been recorded in our neighboring countries, such as in uh, Peninsula Malaysia. And this is not a very big crab. It can only grow up to about 1.5 centimeter in length. And this is one of the smallest freshwater crab we have in Singapore. And this is also a more terrestrial species. It can be often found be, uh, to be found along the string banks digging burrows. With these big eyes, I find this species were rather adorable and cute. And one interesting thing about this crab is that from this photo, we can see that it has been recorded to venture into the cups of pitcher plants. And the reason for this is presumably to look for food or to wear its gills. So the next species we have is the close relative of the Baraka land crab, the little land crab. And this is also one of the smallest freshwater crabs we have in Singapore. It has similar habits as the previous species, but it is also known to climb trees, small trees. However, this species is generally found in the higher elevations of the island, and it has a much more restricted distribution. Hence, it's listed as locally endangered. This species has been found in uh, Southern Peninsula Malaysia as well. So an interesting thing about this species is that its scientific name, Nemesis, is derived from the name of the Greek goddess of divine retribution and anger, Nemesis. And this is in reference to the adult crabs having very bright red colors and a very fierce disposition. So the next species we have is the Johnson's freshwater crab. It is a species that can be found only in Singapore and is listed as vulnerable. However, this is the most common of the three endemic species we have, and it can be widely uh, found in our nature reserves. So it is also not a very big crab. It can grow up to three centimeter in length. And very often you can find them underneath leaf litter. 
and it generally prefers streams that are slower flowing. As you can see from the photo, the adult males have a very enlarged pincer uh, that is usually orange in color. And this species is named after the late Professor Desmond Johnson, who studied freshwater and aquatic fauna at the then University of Singapore. So the next species that I'll be talking about is the lowland freshwater crab. And it is the most common species that you can find in Singapore and is present in many streams, including streams that are more disturbed. And this is also the largest freshwater crab we have, and it can grow up to about five centimeter in length. This species is also known from peninsular Malaysia, and it also can be found in uh, Sumatra as well. What I find interesting about this species is that the young individuals tend to have many small spots on its body. As you can see over here, it tends to have a lot of small spots on its body. And the small spots tends to disappear as the crab grows up. So another species that we'll be talking about, the swamp forest crab, is a close relative of the previous species, the lowland freshwater crab. And this species is endemic to Singapore, only found in Singapore. It is globally critically endangered and it is only known from a small area in our nature reserve. And this is also relatively a larger crab. It can grow up to four centimeter in length. And uh, this is the second largest freshwater crab we have. However, this uh, swamp forest crab is very seldom seen. And this is because of its very secretive uh, nature. It spends most of its time lurking in the deep uh, leaf litter and among the mud itself. So the uh, amazing thing about this freshwater crab is that this species was previously thought to be a variant of the lowland freshwater crab. However, after close examination of specimens and subsequently uh, the data reveals that it's actually a different species and it was eventually described in 1990. And the last species we have is the Singapore freshwater crab. Named after Singapore, it is only known from a few hill streams here. It is listed as critically endangered, and as mentioned by Jeff Lee just now, it is among one of the hundred most threatened species in the world. Well, this species can be usually found in the water. It can be fairly terrestrial as well, and adults are often found out of water. It is quite a small crab. It can grow up to uh, 2.5 centimeter in length, and you can tell this species apart from other species by its small short hairs found throughout its body. Among the six species of freshwater crabs we have, this is my favorite crab, and I spend a lot of my time studying it. However, compared to uh, the other species, I also found out that these species tend to be a lot more aggressive and territorial, and individuals will often fight with each other, and this will potentially result in injury. So coming back to freshwater crab biology, So what do they eat? They are generally not fussy eaters and they will feed on a variety of food. In the wild, they generally feed on leaves, which is the most abundant food that's in available. And here at the top left, we have a lowland freshwater crab that is eating a leaf. And the photo on the right over here, this is a Singapore freshwater crab feeding on a small fruit. Interestingly, I even observed a lowland freshwater crab eating the flesh of the durian previously. However, these crabs prefer to scavenge on animal matters if it is available. At the bottom left, you can see a Johnson's freshwater crab feeding on a small prawn. And over here, we have a Singapore freshwater crab feeding on a mole cricket. And on very rare locations, these crabs are also known to catch smaller animals, such as worms or aquatic insects, to predate on them. So in the wild, what predators do they face? Various animals are known to feed on them. In the water, there's various predatory fishes, such as catfish over here, or snakeheads over here, that can potentially feed on them. 
and even larger crabs can also potentially feed on them. In the terrestrial environment, various animals such as macaques, monitor lizards, or even birds are known to predate on them. So to avoid getting eaten, these crabs will have to find some way to protect themselves. So now I'll be talking about protection. So how can a crab protect itself? Firstly, it avoids predators by using camouflage. So their colors are often matching to the surrounding environment, and this makes them difficult to spot. So from this photo, can you spot the crab? So as you can uh, see, there's actually a small little crab over here. It is quite camouflaged uh, in this uh, natural environment. And secondly, for crabs, they have a pair of large pincers over here. And these pincers are used to defend itself against potential predators. And these pincers can potentially inflict a considerable amount of pain. And I can personally attest to that as I do get pinched when handling crabs. Lastly, crabs have a hard exoskeleton or shell that encase their soft body. Like a suit of armor protecting a person, this exoskeleton protects the crab. So how does a crab grow in size? As mentioned earlier, it is covered with a hard shell. And this shell protects the crab, but it cannot expand as the crab grows. Hence, the crab has to periodically shed its shell and develop a new hard shell. And this process is known as molting. So to get out of the old shell, a fracture has to occur at the back of the crab and the crab has to crawl out of it. However, when the crab is out of its old shell, it becomes extremely vulnerable to predators as the new soft shell uh, has not fully hardened. And once the crab shell hardens, the crab will resume to feed. In this photo over here, it looks like there's two crabs. However, there is only one crab. Can you guess which is the crab? So the crab is actually the one on top. And this is the moat. Do you guess correctly? So very often, a freshwater crab will consume its moat. And this is to replenish its lost uh, mineral during the process. And an interesting thing about freshwater crab, about uh, this process of molting, is that this is the period where they can grow back its lost pincers or limbs. So what threats do they face? In the natural environment, they do face a number of threats. So one of these threats is land use changes. And as existing streams are converted to various uh, purposes such as agriculture, most species will not be able to adapt and survive in this new modified environment. And invasive species is also a known uh, threat to them. And this refers to species that are exotic from, uh, from non, they are non-native to Singapore, and they can bring about adverse impacts to our native species. An example is the red cloth crayfish over here from Australia, which has been reported in some of our water bodies. Therefore, it's important to know that uh, releasing unwanted pets into our nature reserve or parks can adversely uh, impact our native biodiversity. And increasingly, Climate change is becoming a threat for them as the rain, rain pattern becomes increasingly unpredictable. The impacts brought about climate change can adversely affect them. And uh, for instance, long periods without rain can result in the surface water of some stream drying up. While the crabs can retreat into the underground water, prolonged drought is likely to bring about uh, negative impacts upon their long-term survival. So over here, we can see that uh, actually, there's actually a stream, but the surface water has dried up due to a very long drought. So what is NPARCS doing to ensure the future survival of these crabs? As part of our vision to be a city in, in the nature, 
Various key strategies has been devised. Uh, they are listed over here. And one of the, our initiatives is to extend our, our nature park network. And this will help to protect our nature reserve where our freshwater crabs can be found against the impact of human activities. This is uh, because the nature parks will act as a buffer to protect the nature reserve. And one important point to note that everyone has a role to play in it. So what else is, are we doing to conserve them? So I will use the case study of the Singapore freshwater crab. So back in 2008, I was an undergrad doing a final year project on the species. I discovered that the species was in decline. And at that point of time, it was estimated that there's only a few hundred individuals remaining in the wild and the future looks bleak. So to help reverse this declining trend, actions were taken. More surveys were conducted. And fortunately, we discovered this species to be present in a few other streams. So through collaboration with various partners, uh, National University of Singapore and Wildlife Reserve of Singapore, a freshwater crab working group was formed and a comprehensive conservation strategy plan for the species was produced. So this is the document that we have produced. If you are keen to find out more, you can download this uh, PDF file from this uh, QR code over here. And this important document listed various goals, objectives and actions to be taken to better conserve the species. So I'll now talk about our species required program under MPARCS. So this is part of a nature conservation master plan, which highlights our efforts and plans to coordinate, strengthen and intensify our biodiversity conservation efforts. This program aims to conserve native flora and fauna in Singapore. And the Singapore freshwater crab is one of the targeted species in this master, in this program. And parks together with uh, NUS and Wildlife Reserve Singapore took a multi-prompt approach to conserve this species. So various action in line to the conservation strategy plan listed uh, just now were progressively implemented over the years. And this includes measures such as research, monitoring, translocation, captive breeding, and these efforts have been largely successful. For instance, over 40 captive born crabs, crablets were successfully produced for the first time in 2018 at MPARCS, and this represents an important milestone. Some of these animals were subsequently released back to the wild. Considering that the global population size is so small, this uh, breeding program will aid in this uh, species recovery. So to raise public awareness about these animals, a freshwater crab working group has uh, often set up a freshwater crab booth at uh, various outreach events, such as the Festival of Biodiversity. As a result of these uh, conservation efforts, currently the future survival of this Singapore freshwater crab is currently more secure. And similar, fresh, uh, similar conservation measures have also been explored for the critically endangered swamp forest crab. All these efforts will help to conserve our freshwater crabs and in our goal to transform Singapore into a city in nature. So to many people, freshwater crabs may not look particularly appealing. So why should we conserve them? I would like to offer two reasons. Firstly, they are scavengers and they perform a very important role in our ecosystem by breaking down leaf litter and the bodies of uh, the animals. And this helps to recycle the nutrients back into our ecosystem. In addition, they also form part of our food web, serving as a prey as larger animals and also predating on small animals as well. And secondly, they are part of our natural heritage. Some species can be only found in Singapore and as such, they are of national significance. In fact, these species have been 
widely featured in our local medias. And here are the three species that have been even featured in our, our local stems. So over here, we have the Johnson's freshwater crab. We have the Singapore freshwater crab over here and the swamp forest crab over here. So they are priceless natural treasures we have and it's our duty to pass them on to our future generations to be admired and enjoy. Allowing them to go extinct will be a tragedy that we cannot be proud of. So how can we, do, what can we do to help these crabs? So one of the things that everyone can do is by when we are visiting our nature reserve or parks, please stay on the designated trails. And you can help by not littering or polluting our streams or releasing animals as this will harm the crab. And also do only visit during the official opening hours. And if you are keen, you can also volunteer for our outreach events to help educate the public about freshwater crabs. And also you can help to support our research and outreach efforts by donating to our Garden City Fund. And thank you for listening to my talk. And I hope that you have learned more about our amazing freshwater crabs. And as we celebrate our nation's birthday tomorrow, let us also take pride in these little critters that are uniquely Singapore. So now I will hand the time back to Leslie. Thank you, Daniel. That was a very interesting presentation and we have quite a number of questions. So we will now proceed with our Q&A. So the first question we have is, are freshwater crabs active in the day or at night? Or like as some of us might say, nocturnal, which is active at night, or diurnal, active in the day? So based on known uh, evidence about these crabs, uh, they are mostly nocturnal with the exception of few species that are more diurnal. And a reason for this is probably because uh, by coming out at night, they are less likely to encounter predators that uses their uh, eyes to see them, and hence they are more protected at night. Okay, so freshwater crabs are mostly diet, sorry, nocturnal because uh, they want to escape predators at night, they will be harder to see. You know, that said, if, any, if anybody is interested, as Daniel mentioned earlier, please only visit our nature areas during the designated opening hours. Um, nature reserves are open from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. But if you want, you can check the N Parks website for the correct informa information. Okay, the next question is, I've seen many crabs at Sungai Bulo Wetland Reserve. Are any of these freshwater crabs? So freshwater crabs will not uh, be found at a marine environment or a mangrove environment as uh, they spend their entire uh, life cycle or life history in the freshwater environment. So I would believe that none of these are actually freshwater crabs and those are the marine crabs. Okay, so the answer to this is no, because Sungai Bulo is a mangrove and also marine habitat. So you are not likely to find freshwater crabs over there. The next question. How do you tell the difference between a male crab and a female crab? Okay, so from the external morphology of a freshwater crabs, you can tell an adult female because they have a very broad round abdominal. Well, for the males, they have a much uh, narrower T-shaped abdominal. So let's see. Uh, there are some photos that we like to show. So how do you tell between a male and a female? So over here, this is a male. You can see that this is the this is the T-shaped uh, or pointed abdominal for the male crabs. And as for the females, they have a much rounder abdominal over here. So another way that you can potentially tell a male versus a female crab is if you can look at the pincers or the claw itself. So over here, you can see that the male crab has a much enlarged claw 
on one of its claw itself. And as for the female crabs, they tend to have claws that are about equal size. However, this is not a definite uh, diagnostic feature for crabs. And in order to uh, tell them apart, you can also look at the internal morphology, but I will not be uh, talking that much because uh, I don't really have a photo of that to show them. Yeah. Okay, so one of the key differences would be the, the un underside of the abdomen between the male and the female and possibly also the pincers. But that's it. Um, this isn't always the case. And I think in some cases with like the younger crabs that are not fully developed yet, this might be not so evident. Okay, the next question is what does the lowland freshwater crab eat? Okay, so... As I mentioned just now during the presentation, uh, a freshwater crab will feed on practically everything that they can find in the wild. So the most often uh, thing that they'll be seen eating will be leaves, which is the food resource that is uh, most available in the environment. However, they are not fussy eaters. They will feed on various things that is available in the environment. And very often, we also see them eating fruits or even uh, flowers itself that happens to drop into the stream itself. And on rare occasions, you will see them actually eating or uh, feeding on dead animals such as uh, fishes or even other crabs that happens to uh, be in the environment and they are able to find it and consume it. Yeah. Sounds like quite a variety of plants and animal matter, which uh, Daniel has seen the crabs eating. Okay, next question would be, do male crabs employ any special tactics to attract female crabs? Okay, so for freshwater crabs, uh, at least the ones that we have in Singapore, I do not really uh, observe any special tactics that they use to attract uh, female crabs, but uh, they some of the species or the male crabs they tend to have a uh, enlarged claw, and I guess this can be uh, used to attract the female crabs. But how exactly they attract them is, remains a mystery. And in uh, if you are looking at maybe the marine crabs such as the feeder crabs, the males often use the very large and uh, claws to actually wave at the crabs. Uh, the female crabs to attract them, but this has not been really uh, been observed for the freshwater crabs we have in Singapore. Okay, so uh, the answer is no. Although there have been observations of crabs, male crabs having an enlarged claw to attract the females, and Daniel gave the example of the fiddler crab, but this is something that's still not uh, fully understood in terms of freshwater crabs. And let's see the next question. Can more than one species of freshwater crab co-occur in one stream? So in Singapore, very often you see more than one species uh, that can be found within a stream. So the answer is yes, they can be found uh, together. And the, well, different species have their own different habitat preference. They can overlap in their distribution. So for instance, the lowland freshwater crab are often found at the lower stretches of the stream. And for the Singapore freshwater crab, they tend to be found at the upper stretches of the stream. So, but throughout the entire stream, there's an area that both species can be found together. And in addition, the Josasama species or the land crabs, they can be often found at the same stream, but usually they are found out of water. So the answer that for this question is they can occur together in one stream. Okay, so yes, they can. Uh, more than one species of freshwater crab can be found in one stream, but sometimes they are found in like different stretches of the stream or maybe even just out of the water. And finally, what is one surprising thing about freshwater crabs that you have found during your work with NBC? Okay, so there's one surprising thing that I observed during my work over here. So is that freshwater crabs 
that lost both of their pincers are still able to feed. So there's an interesting story on this. So once I encountered a Singapore freshwater crab that has lost both of its pincers, and it was actually in a quite a bad state. And in my mind, I was wondering how it is going to feed itself. As I always thought that the pincers on the crab are used to help them move food into their mouth. And without them, they are unable to feed. So I brought this crab back to the lab and tried to nurse it back to good health. So I placed this uh, handicapped crab in a small tank and dropped some food pellets near the crab. And I was even prepared to intervene by manually feeding it with food by using a pair of forceps. So to my surprise, once the crab were able to sense the presence of food, it uses its first pair of walking legs to manipulate the food into this mouth. And although this was done with a lot of difficulty itself, so after taking care of this uh, crab for about a month, the crab successfully molted and both of its pincers uh, regenerated back. So I also like to emphasize that this was done with a research permit and the public should not be uh, doing the same and should not be disturbing any wildlife that's present in our nature reserve or parks. Okay, thank you, Daniel, for sharing with us that interesting story. So nature can surprise us with its resilience and with, kept, with careful planning and concerted uh, conservation efforts, nature still can thrive, even in a very urbanized setting. Um, that's it. We just want to remind everyone that if do not remove any wildlife from our nature reserves or, or parks and also do not feed any wildlife that you might see. Okay. Thank you, Daniel, for sharing with us about different types of crabs and also the efforts that NBC has put in to ensure that these marvelous crustaceans survive. In 2014, Daniel was an active participant when NParks convened a round table with the National University of Singapore, International Union for Conservation of Nature, Wildlife Reserve Singapore, and other local and international agencies to draw up this strategy for the Singapore freshwater crab. The vision put forth then was to have this species become an ambassador that we can be proud of, and also an example of what an innovative conservation plan can look like. Not just for crabs, but later on in 2015, we came up with a much bigger plan for our little red dot. And this is our nature conservation master plan. It details how we can use science to protect and enhance our key habitats and species and also how we can encourage community stewardship. This master plan is the pathway in our collective effort to becoming a city in nature. I encourage you to go to the NParks SG YouTube channel and watch the first session of the NParks Spotlight series, Creatures of the Night. In that session, our group director, Lim Liang Jim, gives a detailed presentation of this plan. On our YouTube channel, you also find recordings of all our previous sessions for you to gain insights into the biodiversity around us. And if you enjoy these talks, do share them with your friends and family. We have more sessions coming up every Saturday in August. Next weekend, join us to be enthralled by some fishy tales. Have you ever wondered what creatures live in Singapore's waters? Come learn about the vibrant world beneath the waves and hear about our speakers' first-hand encounters with fishy inhabitants of Singapore's waters. Do register to join us on Zoom or you can stream the talk live on our YouTube channel. The registration link will be shared in the chat very soon. And with that, it leaves me to thank Daniel for the session and for our audience on Zoom and YouTube for staying with us. Do share your feedback by scanning the QR code on my screen. To all Singaporeans, happy National Day. And more importantly, take care and stay safe. Have a great weekend, everybody.